closely. I'll confess that. Um, but when I saw it on our agenda, you know, I did a little research. And what we're talking about here are potential regulations. And we may have, you know, others in the process may have a sense of what they think they're going to say. But right now, there aren't any regulations to which we could respond. And when the regulations, whatever they may be, get passed, or, or I should say are introduced, the process builds in a period of public comment, which is you know, at least several months long. That's where I think we ought to be participating. And I assume that a lot of these other interested parties, including those who are you know, pushing right now for us to uh, adopt the resolution, uh, that they would participate and that they would be able to flesh out some of the claims, which, I mean, frankly, as I read our resolution, it kind of reads like an op-ed, which is sort of where it originated. And I get that. And, you know, you want to take a position for one side or the other, that's fine. But our resolution and some of the backup stuff make claims that really, to me, don't seem to be 100% accurate. Uh, and it, if nothing else, they're not supported yet by any evidence to back up claims such as it said that the the study on which the projections of sea rise are based is flawed. Okay, in what regard? You know, we don't have that information. That's someone's opinion, and who knows? Maybe it's accurate, but it doesn't tell us anything. I know from research of the last 24 hours that this isn't something brand new. Uh, this is something that was at least three and maybe four years in the making, and the study that came out in 2019 that it's based on was not, you know, some slapdash product. This, it was the result of uh, contributions from a lot of people, uh, you know, from Princeton University, from state and federal government, from the National Oceanic Administration, you know, people who have a stake and who understand these kinds of issues. And the projections that they have in the report, as I understand it, there's basically a low, a moderate, and a high projection, which corresponds to, you know, relatively lower or higher projected levels of uh, sea rise. And that's keyed to amount of greenhouse uh, gases that are emitted. And if the low end projects if more stringent measures are taken worldwide you know, to reduce those emissions. The moderate is if the current measures that are being taken by America and other countries uh, were to remain in place. And the third would be if there's no change you know, or, or a backsliding. So the report with the projection of 5.1 feet of rise in 80 years, that's based on the moderate assumption, which is basically that if we just do what we're doing now as a nation and don't do anything else, that you would still project as much as a 5.1 foot rise. But it's not something that's just going to happen in 80 years. I mean, sea rise is happening now. And in the report, they point out that the projections, you know, even as soon as 30 years from now, at a moderate level, are projecting an over two foot rise. And that, you know, on an island like Brigantine, that could be catastrophic. You know, anecdotally, there was a story the other day in the, I think, the Philadelphia Inquirer about a community not dissimilar to Brigantine down in the Outer Banks. Uh, now, they don't have, apparently, the same level of beach protection that we have. They don't have a dune system, et cetera, but they are along the water. And basically, in that town, they have thrown up their hands because they know that in the very short term, they're going to be underwater and the main road in their town is going to be underwater. And the only measures they can think of right now are going to be enormously expensive. And there's no money to do that. And there's nobody riding in to save them. You know, we don't want to be in that position. We, we need to, and, and whatever the, the ultimate package of measures would be and how you would time things out, but we need to do something now. Now, whether I'm not saying it has to be a five foot. And if five foot is the, ends up being one of the proposed regulations, and if that's what would be appropriate, you know, assuming as they do, uh, a moderate level of sea rise uh, in 80 years time. That's a subject that certainly, I, I would hope, would be discussed pretty aggressively during the course of the public comment on whatever regulations are gonna be proposed. But it, it's not accurate for us, for anybody to say that we're looking at something that's gonna be 80 years down the road, because let's face it, we, not this council, but we <laughs> as a people do it all the time we kick it down the road. And you know, this, is not, this is not something, uh, and the example was used in, in the resolution and in the backup stuff about the fact that in New Jersey, for example, master planning has a, an outlook of about 20 to 30 years. Well, master plans deal with 
factors that are basically related to human behavior that you can control or demographic changes, uh, you know, or cultural changes that you can predict and that you can see and that you need to be a little more flexible to address, you know, as time goes on. We don't have an answer right now, at least not an answer that we can control for the increasing levels of the sea. We can do what we can, but you know, the rest of the world, if they don't do it, it's still going to happen. So we need to look now at what are reasonable, you have to look worst case, but let's look at reasonable projections of what is gonna happen. Don't make unreasonable assumptions about people changing their behaviors uh, and figure out you know, what can we do? And you know what, the answer might not be, or some of the answers might not be very palatable and may cost money. What I'm, what I'm concerned about is when we, if we adopt something like this, and it won't have any binding effect because if you know they're going to adopt regulations or propose regulations, that's going to happen, and there's still going to be the public comment period, and then whatever comes out of that is, you know, your ultimate regulation. But when we talk about things having catastrophic impacts economically and otherwise, and we're looking at the worst case in the out, 80 years out, um, that that a lot of times turns into a justification for ignoring a problem further. So I would suggest instead of the resolution, we should commit ourselves to participating once, assuming this happens, once they propose regulations, you know, find these other stakeholders, talk to them, be it the Chamber of Commerce or you know, whoever else is an interested party, people who would know, for example, what are the actual projected costs and how feasible would it be if in Brigantine, for example, you had to adopt a new higher standard? Well, how much is that gonna to add to the average house and cost? Are there you know, physical or other constraints that would perhaps prevent us from being able to implement that? Could you have conditions where you grandfather or phase things in? Um, you know, solutions, answers, ideas, uh, instead of just saying, look, here's what we think DEP is gonna adopt and it's bad. Maybe, maybe as presented, if it gets presented that way, maybe it is bad, but let's, let's have that discussion and let's have everything on the table when we do it. That's all I have, thank you. And I think, uh, Rick, one of the things you hit on is that's really what this resolution is about. It's about having, you know, reasonable changes. I don't think anybody's questioning whether or not sea levels are rising. I think the proposal is to raise it five feet. And when you look at that study, there's two things. There's different, um, like you said, different tiers of the study that are going on. And my understanding is that there's only a 17% chance that the sea levels are actually going to raise five feet in the next 80 years. Now, look, I, I could have that incorrect. I'm not a scientist, but this is my understanding of the study. I think one of the things with the study, too, is that it doesn't really include what communities like Brigantine have done for flood resiliency. You know, and there are some towns, like you mentioned, the one community that's kind of thrown its hands up and said there's nothing they can do. Well, Brigantine has really taken an active approach in order to try to improve our resiliency towards that. In fact, you know, this is improving our CRS rating. Um, and it's actually why people right now get a 25% discount on their flood insurance. You know, we're, we're doing things with raising the bulkheads, with pump stations, you know, even with closing off the um, boat ramp. You know, there's a, a lot of things that are going on here in Brigantine. And we're, we're asking that if the DEP is going to make changes, if they know 80 years from now, there's going to be a situation where it maybe it is five feet, why are we implementing the five foot now? How about we phase it in over time to make it reasonable for people to kind of adjust to that? And that's what I said. I come back to this too. For all of those people who weren't able to raise their homes, there's a penalty for not meeting the minimum flood base elevation. So that's, that's the whole part of this. There's some economic factors that I don't think are being considered. And as you said, th this is non-binding. Our resolution does not change the law. It does not force them to do anything. It just kind of brings to light that, hey, we have some questions. We want to, know, want to know what's going on. And of course, you know, we want to commit ourselves to being a part of that. If you go back after Sandy, um, you look at all the flood maps that were created and how many homes were placed in the V zone. It was really Brigantine that led the charge that showed them that their quote, scientific data was flawed. You know, sometimes you have these knee-jerk reactions that come from some catastrophic event or some, you know, even the study showing a potential of a catastrophic event. You know, so what we're trying to do is, is to say, hey, slow down a little bit. Let's see what's going on. Let's make reasonable changes and let's take where we are now 
and phase our way into where we need to be in 80 years, not do it all in one jump because we don't know what that impact is. And whether people agree or disagree, that's fine. But I think part of this is for us to kind of stand up and take that leadership position again to say, hey, this is something that every short community right now should be a paying attention to involved in the legislative process. We're, we're reaching out to our, um, our state legislators, uh, Senator Chris Brown and our assembly people, Mazio and Armada to say, hey, look, we want you guys to be involved. We wanna be involved in this process. Here's our concerns. And that's all we're trying to do with this. And Vince, I, I appreciate that. And you know, certainly uh, there's no question. Brigantine uh, took the lead, has continued to take the lead in establishing and implementing resiliency measures and with great benefit, you know, not just to our flood insurance premiums, but you know, to the fact that we are objectively speaking, you know, relatively safer from, you know, larger flooding events at this point in history. That said, what we're looking at now is, to use an overused word these days, it's an existential threat, uh, but it's a real thing. This is something that is happening. It's out of our control. It's measurable. And you know, people may disagree um, about where it's going to end up in 10 years, 30 years, 80 years. Um, but I, I think it's important to keep everything on the table. Um, if we take shouldn't say we, you know, to the extent that people are saying, hey, the study is flawed. Well, again, I don't know where the flaw is. Uh, you know, if the results are sound and the projections are sound, then they may be pretty disquieting, but they are what they are. Um, but it, I am genuinely fearful that that would be used as an excuse to stall, to do things which really maybe aren't needed given the quality of the work that's been done so far. Uh, and maybe avoid conversations which we need to engage in and which we want to engage in, which are those ones that you're talking about, aimed at you know, making sure that when a decision or before a decision is made, that it takes into account all of the considerations. Now, a side note, from what I can see uh, going to the website, apparently over the past year, there were a number of meetings of stakeholders from different groups. So none of these issues are, I would assume, new uh, to the DEP. And whether or not that factors into whatever regulations are ultimately proposed, you'll see. And I reiterate, we definitely should participate in the public process, the comment period that's going to follow. Um, but I, I think the way it's presented in our resolution, uh, I think it goes further than simply to say, hey, there's other issues that, that you're not taking into account, or you may not be taking into account, and they need to be taken into account. You know, economic and practical issues, et cetera. Uh, we have things in there where, for example, we're saying the science behind the 80-year projections have been questioned as reported in a guest editorial. Well, okay, uh, anybody can write a guest editorial and say anything they want. I don't think that's something we wanna be hanging our hat on at this point in time. We could simply say, hey, we would like to see the science behind it. And if there is, you know, counter view. If there are other studies that, that indicate, you know, something substantially different, put those on the table too, before any decisions are made. Um, I'm, I don't want to be, my concern is just, I don't want to be too far out on one side of it saying what you're proposing is bad. It's unnecessary. It can't work. It shouldn't be done unless we see, you know, lay it out and let's see both sides. What is the reality and what are the options? And within that framework, absolutely. Let's talk about phase-ins and limitations and, you know, carve-outs, you know, for situations, and perhaps ours is one of them, where we already have measures in place that are protective further into the future, maybe than other towns, uh, whatever we may, wherever we may be 80 years from now, which, final point, 80 years is not such a long window. It feels like forever, but I thought about this. I'm living in a house that's 50 years old. So, and in my neighborhood where I grew up, you know, the homes, there's still one or two homes, uh, the original homes there from 60 years ago. So, you know, the homes that are being built today, maybe around in 80 years time. Uh, and, you know, whatever changes they may go through in the interim, uh, do we really want to be building stuff that, you know, is not going to be responsive to and protected from changes, even at the low end, that are going to happen, barring, you know, some beneficial change in the way people conduct themselves, you know, in 20, 30, 50, and then ultimately 80 years. I mean, it's, a, it's not something to dismiss out of hand. I think it's something we have to factor in. Thanks. Hey, um, 
That's a good point, Rick. And I certainly appreciate Vince. Everything that upgrade uh, update on the whole thing was fabulous. Rick, you made some uh, really, really good points and you've both been talking about it a long time now. And, uh, so in honor of St. Patrick, I'd like to make a motion to vote on this now. I think we're all in agreement on it. Hey, I, I have one last question. And, and I'm but certainly, <laughs> I am certainly against anything that's going to raise our flood insurance rates. Where are you calling from, Mike? It's <laughs> <laughs> hanging out with a bunch of leprechauns somewhere <laughs> up the north end. Huh? <laughs> I just, I just get worried about everything always being put on the homeowners, you know? I mean, you're talking five feet in 80 years, and like everyone was saying, we should gradually do it. I mean, are we going to raise City Hall? Are we going to raise the police department? Are we going to raise the fire department or public works? Are we going to raise ACME and Wawa and all the other support services for the island? I mean, if you're saying it's going to go up five feet in 80 years, this island's going to be gone or we're going to be Venice. I mean, so I think... I, I understand and I think we need to, to tread carefully and I get that. And I want to I want to look at the science, but to throw everything at us in one shot is a bit much. There's already a lot of people that left this island uh, because of that reason and the house is being raised and not wanting to go up a flight mm -hmm. of steps. Um, and if we start scaring people like that, they're not going to want to come by here. They're not going to want to even visit here or, 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 or invest in here. So I think we need to be careful as, as to what we look at, what science we look at. And if we do have to make some changes, like we said, all right, what are the projections 10 years out the road or 20 years out the road or 30 years out the road? Then we can work with them and let's let's make those changes gradually so that if Lord forbid, you know, the insurance does have to go up, people aren't getting absolutely hammered and saying, you know what, we're just going to leave. You know, let's let's work with uh, with everybody that we've got here. Um, and that's something that's really got to be taken into consideration. So, yeah, I want to be cautious. Yeah, I want to look at the science and yeah, I want to be prepared. Um, but to throw a thing that much at us, you know, as something that might happen in 80 years, I think is a bit much. I think we need to, uh, to look at some more things and, 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 and do our homework and make sure we're doing our job for the people to make sure to say, all right, you know, if you're saying in 10, 15, 20 years from now, we might be there. Okay. Well, do we have to go up five feet? Why can't we, uh, you know, why can't we go up like another foot in, in five years or 10 years? I just, I think there's more things we can look at. That's all. Okay. Uh, uh, Mayor, yeah, I'd just like to say a little bit as well. Uh, very well stated on the introduction of the ordinance. Uh, uh, Rick, very well stated as well. Uh, you laid your case out uh, quite nicely and some good words there from Neil as well. Um, so, uh, Kind of piggybacking on the uh, on everybody, I think uh, there were some key words spoken by Rick. He said, "Keep everything on the table," and I think, uh, you know, maybe in reference to, you know, a, a different situation possibly. But I think going on what Neil just spoke about, that's where we need to be. We just need to keep everything on the table, be flexible, uh, you know, follow the evolving situation, everything, but be able to change on the fly, so to speak. Um, we should not be like uh, kind of what the what the state is getting ready to uh, yeah at some point move forward with or so they're in the planning stages I should say is kind of like setting off some alarm bells so uh, like uh, also along with what Neil said do we want all this stuff going on also we're going to raise this building that building we're going to have people panic ridden people who maybe live down here or thinking of moving down here it's just kind of they, they, they shouldn't be going 80 years ahead mentioning a, such such a plan like that everything obviously we just need to keep an eye on everything follow the science follow the data what's going on um rick mentioned the outer banks i've been down there many many times great time down there um and i've read up on the outer banks as well and they have uh, some areas that are much more susceptible to that erosion. Homes are much, much cheaper, mm -hmm. and, but there's other areas that are much more stable in the banks. I mean, you're, uh, you're out there in the, it's almost like you're out in the darn middle of the ocean driving out the outer banks. It's an incredible drive when you go down there, beautiful drive. Um, so um, I, I just think that this ordinance, just as it's introduced, is just our way of just saying, hey, Let's, uh, let's hold the phone here a little bit. Like, as far as what they're planning, let's just not uh, jump to conclusions 80 years up the road and just start enacting plans to do stuff. Let's just be cautious and be ready to uh, move throughout any adjustment periods that we might need as far as rising the tides and sea levels and things of that nature. So thank you.
Thank you. My turn. <laughs> and I think in today's standards, these five feet requirements are un totally unreasonable. And I am one of those senior citizens who chose not to raise my house after Sandy because <clears throat> our knees are getting older and carrying those groceries up uh, 16, 17 steps at this point uh, is, is unreasonable for us. And to add another five feet, I think you're really, it, that would really force most senior citizens who could not afford an elevator off the island. Um, I think this is a good state, a good way to at least let the DEP know that, yeah, we're listening and yes, we are not happy with it. So I, I'd like to go ahead with this resolution. Any other comments? All right, seeing none, can we have roll call? You. <clears throat> you. You lost her. Oh, there she is. She's still muted, right? No mute. Karen, we can't hear you. There we go. Got it. Sorry. It was telling me only only the host could share a meeting. I hit some wrong button. Uh, yes. Latiri? Yes. Amy? Yes. Lucre? Uh, I'm going to vote no to the resolution, but based on my comments, I think um, you can see I'm in agreement with the principle that we need to participate in the process once regulations, whatever they may be, are, are uh, promulgated and that we need to make sure that the, the kind of interests that are unique to our town, maybe not unique, but you know, certainly shared by our town and the other shore towns, uh, in terms of the economics, in terms of the practical impacts on people who may have to raise their homes or who uh, have deferred raising their homes in anticipation of doing it at some future date, that all of that is taken into consideration uh, when you get to the public comment period on those regulations. Kane? Yes. Reardon? Yes. Mayor Sarah? I'd like to thank everyone on council for a good discussion on this. You know, and there's some good takeaways about this. One, we wanna make sure we have a seat at the table and a voice. Uh, two, we need to really look at what those economic impacts are that come from, as well as just the impacts on our, our residents who live here in Brigantine. The other thing too, and this is something I actually didn't think about, I know Rick brought this up about, is there a possibility for carve outs? If there are communities that are taking extensive measures for their flood resiliency, could there be something forgiven or some kind of carve out or something that's done? One, to incentivize doing that and two, to reward communities uh, who are able to engage in that. You know, so there's some good discussion here. So I vote yes. Motion carried. All right, next up, we have resolution 2021-51, and this is an award of contract for reconstruction of Sheridan Boulevard from Varden Road to Sarazen Road. And this is to um, Lexia Concrete LLC, uh, who bid $264,395.30. Uh, can we have a motion and second? So moved. Second. Any questions or comments? Yeah, I just had a, an email the other day from somebody who lives along Sheridan Boulevard asking if we had a timeline. And I, it, was, it was good that I was able to email her back and tell her, yes, it was on tonight's agenda. Do we have a timeline once we um, have this contractor hired as to when, do we have an end date? That's my question, John. Maybe to you or Jimmy. As soon as we pass the resolution, we will set up a um, construction meeting, and we will have a better date then. Okay, thank you. I'll let her know that. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, can we have roll call? You. Yes. Latiri. Yes. Amy? Yes. DeLucre? Yes. Kane? Yes. Reardon? Yes. Mayor Sarah? Yes. Motion carried. 
Resolution 2021-52, and this is the renewal of the Smile Factory Arcade License. We have a motion and second. I'll make that I'll motion. Make second. Any questions or comments? Uh, yes, Mayor. Uh, I'd just like to say that uh, my children, when they were younger and many you know, us on council and their relatives and all the uh, kids here on our island, uh, it's a wonderful place down there that uh, Jeff Delson takes uh, such good care of and has a lot of pride in. And it's a real asset to our community. And uh, I, I, I thank Jeff for the great job that he's done in maintaining that. And it's just a, uh, like I said, just a moment ago, it's a wonderful facility and good to see it just keep moving forward. Thanks. Can we have roll call? Will? Yes. Latieri? Yes. Amy? Yes. Delucri? Yes. Kane? Yes. Reardon? Yes. Mayor Sarah? Yes. Motion carried. Resolution 2021-53, and this is a water sewer installation fee refund. Uh, motion and second. I'll make second. that motion. Second. Any questions or comments? Seeing none, can we have roll call? You? Yes. Petiri? Yes. Haney? Yes. Delucri? Yes. Kane? Yes. Reardon? Yes. Mayor Sarah? Yes. Motion carried. Resolution 2021-54, and this is a sewer service fee refund. We have a motion and second. I'll make that motion. I'll second. Any questions or comments? Seeing none, can we have roll call? You? Yes. Thierry? Yes. Amy? Yes. Lucre? Yes. Payne? Yes. Reardon? Yes. Mayor Sarah? Yes. Motion carried. We have resolution 2021-55, and this is a resolution appointing Municipal Joint Insurance Fund Commissioner for the City of Brigantine, and that would appoint Molly O'Neill as the Fund Commissioner. We have a motion and second. I'll make that motion. Second. second. Questions or comments from Council? Seeing none, can we have roll call? View? Yes. Latiri? Yes. Haney? Yes. Lucre? Yes. Payne? Yes. Reardon? Yes. Mayor Sarah? Yes. Motion carried. Resolution 2020-56, and this is a resolution of the City Council of the City of Brigantine appointing Edward Stinson as the Community Rating Systems Program Coordinator for 2021. And this is a not to exceed amount of $6,000. We have a motion and second. So moved. Second. second. Any questions or comments? Seeing none, can we have roll call? You? Yes. Latiri? Yes. Haney? Yes. Delucri? Yes. Kane? Yes. Reardon? Yes. Mayor Sarah? Yes. Motion carried. Resolution 2021-57, and this is a resolution authorizing the award of contract to American Demolition Corp of Egg Harbor Township for the demolition of removal of an existing building. And this is in the amount of $80,850. We have a motion and second. So moved. Second. Just so people know, this is the old Civic Center. Uh, it's been pretty much empty and not used since Sandy. I know in some of the last storms and stuff, we've had some issues with the roof and parts of the building coming off. So it's becoming a safety issue and we wanna make sure that we take care of it before something happens. Any uh, questions or comments from council? Seeing none, can we have roll call? You? Yes. Thierry? Yes. Haney? Yes. Delucri? Yes. Kane? Yes. Reardon? 
Yes. Mayor Sarah? Yes. Motion carried. We have our consent agenda. We have the Presbyterian Church raffle license number 928. Have a motion and second? So moved. Second. Questions or comments? Seeing none, can we have roll call? View? Yes. Latiri? Yes. Haney? Yes. Delucri? Yes. Ain? Yes. Reardon? Yes. Mayor Sarah? Yes. Motion carried. All right, so next up we have our council manager committee discussions. Uh, Jim, do you have anything for us? Mayor, I do not tonight, thank you. Right, perfect, then I will turn it over to our deputy mayor, Karen Bue. All right, first and foremost, I wanna once again, thank all of our volunteers who have helped us schedule at this point, more than 600 seniors from our island to get their COVID vaccination at the Atlantic City Convention Center. Um, our COVID fairies, as we call them, have worked day and night before and after school, at lunchtime, at home. Uh, it's just amazing what they've done in getting people scheduled and notified of their appointments. And I just want everybody to know that we still have our city hotline open at 609-266-7600, uh, extension 333. You can call anytime and provide us with your information, um, at least your name and your phone number, and somebody will get back to you as soon as possible. We are not at this time, we don't feel it's necessary to have our Saturday morning sessions at the Civic Center or the Community Center as we've done, we had done for three weeks in a row. Um, but anybody can get in touch with um, City Hall or the Fire Department and please, we're still willing to help you get your appointments. Um, moving on to the links, I understand the links was quite busy this weekend with, or last, and last week with some nice weather. And I'd also like to say that the green team has received word from Sustainable Jersey that we've been awarded the, an energy audit grant that we had um, talked about at our last meeting. John, is there anything you'd like to bring us up to date on with that since I wasn't able to make the green team meeting last week? I uh, know, just to let you know that we did have a kickoff meeting yesterday and um, as it progresses, you will be hearing more uh, in the next coming upcoming weeks. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, the uh, Rutgers Rain Barrel is now on display in City Hall lobby. Stop by and learn about water conservation. And finally, the Green Team Active Awareness Walks will begin next week. Anyone interested in getting a little bit of exercise and picking up a little bit of litter along the way, um, please join them at Shark Park on the following Wednesdays, March 24th at 5 p.m., March 31st at 5 p.m., April 14th at 6 p.m., and April 21st at 6 p.m. also. A group of people go out, they have a good time, a lot of camaraderie while they get some exercise and beautify, beautify our island at the same time. And I just want to tell everybody happy St. Patty's Day and enjoy the rest of your day. See you in a couple of weeks. Thank you. Let's go to our second ward councilman, Paul Terry. Um, I have nothing this week except uh, I, I too would like to thank all the volunteers that helped out getting those appointments for our senior citizens. Um, they did a real stand, stand up job, but that's what Brigantine is like. Uh, we stand up for one another. And again, I'd like to thank them all. Thank you. Let's go to our third ward councilman, uh, Dennis Haney. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, nothing really much uh, going on, you know, in the third ward that's uh, super important. Uh, things, everything's running smoothly, I'd have to say. And uh, just as far as uh, state news, it's very good to hear that uh, beginning 6 a.m., I believe it is, on uh, Friday, We'll, they'll be at 50% capacity for uh, businesses, restaurants, bars, uh, personal care, barbershops, salons, uh, gyms, uh, I guess some, uh, I think casinos as well. Uh, so that is excellent news. 
Um, I think there's a, I heard there was a bunch of leprechauns uh, marching around Trenton that weren't too happy about uh, the fact that it's Friday at 6 a.m. and maybe it didn't happen today at 6 a.m. So maybe uh, we'll get a few more people out there and have fun on St. Patty's Day. But uh, so be it. Uh, you know, I thought maybe a, a, a governor with the name of Murphy maybe would have maybe moved that up just a little bit. Just, just my two cents on that. But uh, good news nonetheless. Let's keep moving forward. A uh, long time in the uh, making, I have to say somewhat, but uh, we'll take it. Thank you. Thank you. Go to our fourth ward councilman, Rick DeLucre. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I want to join my fellow council people, of course, and, and again, thanking um, all the volunteers who have set up the appointments for the vaccination. Um, one of the things that, that I hear from the people who have been vaccinated now, even those who didn't think that they were particularly stressing about the entire COVID pandemic, uh, they find it's like a great load off their, off their shoulders and off their minds as soon as they get this. Uh, so maybe they were more stressed than they thought. Uh, so thank, thank all those volunteers. Um, I have much, much more to say, but I'm going to decline to say it because I think I've already taken too much time from Mike's holy day of observance and I will defer to him. Thank you. Thanks, Rick. Let's go to our uh, councilman at large, Neil Kane. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. I don't have a whole lot to add. Just, uh, you know, uh, want everyone to continue to be safe. We're going to get through it. Summer's around the corner. Um, please be patient with the construction going out of the island. Um, it's We're getting there. It's really important that it gets done. And uh, just want to thank everybody for tuning in. And, uh, you know, we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Perfect. Let's go to our uh, other councilman at large, Mike Reardon. Uh, I, first of all, I'd like to thank everyone who tuned in here this evening on St. Patrick's Day. And and also, uh, once again, phenomenal job by all the volunteers. And our work is not done. We, we uh, it, it's such a fabulous community effort, uh, getting these appointments for the seniors and, and everyone that's eligible. So keep the, keep the uh, anyone we can help, just keep the calls coming. We have the hotline at City Hall. You can reach out to any member of council and everybody knows somebody that can get contact and We'll, we'll get anybody who needs to get scheduled, we'll get them scheduled. So keep those calls coming in. And uh, I want to thank uh, Councilman DeLucre for, uh, for uh, his uh, mindfulness on the uh, holy day today. And, uh, and so I'll uh, hold any further comments in honor of St. Patrick and uh, thank you all. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you, Mike. Um, I think Paul Atiri said it really well when he, uh, talked about how well Brigantine comes together whenever we're in need, you know, and that's really what makes our community great. Um, you know, at a time where people were really desperate and didn't know where to turn, you know, a lot of people stepped up and helped. And that's, you know, what this community has done time and time again. Uh, now with the availability of the vaccine really rolling out, um, Walgreens is now scheduling appointments for people who don't know. So you have Walgreens and CBS and Brigantine both scheduling appointments, uh, more and more vaccines. Uh, what I hear from the governor's office is that we anticipate that just after, um, just after Easter, there should be enough vaccines in the state of New Jersey so that every single adult over the age of 18 uh, should be able to get one. So we're, we're really moving in a good position. I think, you know, especially with our seniors, you know, we're, we're close to 700 seniors that um, our volunteers have helped get appointments, you know, and that really starts to protect our community in two ways. One, it helps the people who need it most, you know, but realize too, like as we move into the summer months, there's a lot of people who are going to be coming here to the island. And we want to make sure that our, that our seniors and our community is protected. And I think, you know, this council and our volunteers and our police, I'm sorry, our, our firefighters and our teachers have really worked hard uh, to make sure that our city's in the best possible position. One of the things we want to start to look at too, and, um, you know, we've been reaching out to other communities to see what's going on in the summer. You know, um, as the numbers of COVID active cases start to decline, we're looking at some of the lowest cases, lowest active cases in Brigantine right now. We've been tracking this at, at its high, you know, we had about 70, 70 to 80 active cases at a time. 
right now we're, we're in the low 20s. So we are moving in the right direction. Uh, with more and more vaccine rolling out, we should have people safer and safer. And I think it's time for us to start to look at, you know, what the summer is going to bring, what activities we can provide in the summer, like some of the great things here, like movies on the beach. You know, what are the outdoor activities that we can offer that are safe, that you can socially distance? I think we should also put some consideration, too, into whether or not we're going to run the Brigantine Triathlon this year. You know, I've talked with the city manager a little bit about it. We're looking to see what other communities are doing. Um, you know, is there a safe way that we can do that? What are the things that we can start to do to, to bring life back to normal in our community? Uh, with that too, uh, one of the things that I would really like to do is return to in-person council meetings, you know, starting um, April 7th with our next council meeting. I know the planning board has been in person for a while. Uh, we meet in the same room. It works very well. Uh, we do have a large planning board. Some members are virtual, but almost everybody's there and everybody shows up. And I think it's important for us if, if we're going to start opening things up and we're going to start to move in that direction. I think we need to take that lead and start to move back towards that for the next meeting. I know um, the planning board and the courts have a good system of how to keep the crowd that comes in and the guests that come in to watch socially distanced. And I I think we use those same practices uh, to keep things moving forward. Uh, one of the other things too, um, one of the big initiatives in the state of New Jersey as, as, well, in Brigant, as well as in Brigantine is to preserve marinas. Uh, one of the things that's happening statewide is because, especially in shore communities, uh, waterfront properties at such a premium uh, there's more and more marinas that are selling and becoming homes. Uh, you know, we've been concerned about this for a while here in Brigantine. You know, what, what happens when all the marinas are gone? What do we do for our boat lovers? Um, right now, we are in the beginning stages of working with an investor to try to work to preserve one of our marinas here in Brigantine. Uh, one of the things that we're going to be looking at and presenting to council uh, in the coming weeks is a redevelopment plan, which is going to help achieve that goal. And we're going to have a full presentation for council on what it is we're looking at and why we think this would be a good fit for our island. One, to preserve marinas, uh, but two, to just enhance the island itself. But I wanted to give people a heads up on this. We've, we've had some initial meetings and I don't want anybody to be surprised. And I want people to know that this is something we're working on in the background. And it could have um, you know, some good uh, financial impacts for the island. It could be very, very good for our community as well as the property values um, in and around uh, this redevelopment area we're looking at. Uh, once we have a little bit more information, we'll be putting this out to council and we'll actually have a full presentation that'll come in for the community as well. But just to give people an idea that this is kind of going on in the background and in, in the very infancy stages. Um, with that, I'd like to open it up to public comments. So if there's anybody from the, uh, from the public who would like to speak, please signal to the city manager and he will recognize you. Uh, first one I see is, oh, looks like he put his hand down. BWG, did you want to speak? Go ahead. Please uh, give the clerk your name and address. Thank you very much. I'm Brooks Garrison um, at 204 15th Street North, and I appreciate the opportunity to speak to council again tonight. Um, there are several of my neighbors that have joined this conference call, uh, so I just when I invite everybody to have a voice, I'll take the lead and discuss the three issues that we've talked about before. Uh, mayor, uh, mayor's aware of them as well as uh, Councilman uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Latiri. So the first is pretty easy. The first is a request to review the street lighting uh, between 14th Street and Beach Avenue along and up to 15th Street where it enters the dune. It's the only section in Brigantine that has five street light poles with all five poles having street lights on them. So I've requested that the two intermediate poles be uh, removed. There was a pole just installed in front of my house and my neighbor's house uh, on 15th street. It's a fiberglass pole. It has no additional wires or any other utilities on them. Uh, the pole had been down for several years prior to uh, being erected this summer and um, 
the light is in between the intersection at Beach Avenue and 15th Street, which is the corner as you turn, and the last light that we're requesting remain at the intersection of the paving and the beach access. So that's the, the that pole can come out completely. Uh, the second would be the one in between on Beach Avenue, between the corner of 14th Street and the corner of 15th Street. Uh, we feel strongly that those two corners ought to be illuminated properly. And the middle pole is, uh, again, unnecessary as it's less than 300 feet from each of the other two poles. So that would be a council resolution. Uh, it would be a resolution to request the township uh, city manager to write a letter to Atlantic City Electric. Uh, and that would, again, it's a paid fee per pole, per illumination, usage fee monthly to Atlantic City Electric. So it would reduce the cost to uh, Brigantine City and again, reduce the light pollution in our area. So that was, that was the first issue. If you'd like to comment on that, I have two more if you would. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know if uh, Councilman Lutieri had an opportunity to talk with you, but the first step in that to getting um, like street lights removed, and it's the same thing when you want to add street lights is just to, if you put together something for all your neighbors and they sign a letter and sign off that they want it removed, that would be the first step. And we do that anytime we make some kind of major change. So it sounds like you kind of have already had that connection with people. So I think that would be the first step. And then that would start the ball rolling on our end to reach out to Atlantic City Electric to remove the light. So if you could take that first step and, you, and send a copy to myself and um, Councilman Letiri, then we could try to move that forward for you. This Thank is Peter you, Kitts. It, this, this is Peter Kitts. Um, hey, uh, Mr. Mayor, if, if uh, Mr. Garrison is done, we can turn it over to Mr. Kitts. Remind everybody, please just don't speak. Wait till you're called. Thank you. I think Mr. Garrison had two other issues he wanted to address. Okay, Mr. Garrison, continue. Yeah, okay, thank you. So the other uh, two issues, one's the flooding of that same intersection at 14th Street um, and Beach Avenue. Uh, as you're aware, that area has been uh, subject to flooding. Uh, the current site plan that's approved for the nine lot development that my neighbors that are on this call uh, belong to that are currently being built by Gary Warner. Um, the two houses on 15th Street are under construction and eminent for completion. So with that, the planning board approvals uh, subject to uh, that approved site plan are going to be required to be implemented. Um, so it's our request again to consider uh, at the planning board level those changes necessary. The one that's applicable to city council is the raising of the street at 14th and, 5th and Beach Avenue. Uh, the improvements that I brought up earlier include paving and asphalt curb replacement all from 14th Street North around 15th and on Beach Avenue. Uh, that paving, of course, if the street is raised at 14th Street uh, would be subject to being torn up again. So it would be a consideration issue that perhaps Gary Warner is the developer there and the developer of the recently approved redevelopment zone the old rod and reel site uh, that's going to have to make improvements at that same intersection, consider with the city as a three-part uh, process to raise that intersection for the public safety and welfare uh, of those residents on 15th Street. As you're aware, we have no other vehicular access to our street other than through that intersection, which gets up to a foot of flooding. Um, as a registered architect in New Jersey, I had an opportunity to review the approved site plan and noted that the grade elevations noted on that site plan all slope downhill to that intersection. Falls almost two feet from the intersection of 15th and Beach Avenue and along 14th Street, as we all know, it goes from the beach uh, west as far as grade elevation sloping downhill. So there's at least a foot uh, of fall along there that would not back the water up into either area, uh, that that intersection by raising it uh, could achieve a situation where it could be a, a neutral or no flood zone. Um, that would of course require the enhancement of the inlets and raising of the adjacent curbs. Of course, with the redevelopment site that was just approved in 
council ordinance number three last meeting. Uh, that intersection is going to be improved on that southwest corner. Uh, the northwest corner, of course, is the wetlands. Our corner is the Gary Warner current construction in the pump house. And then the south corner, southeast corner, which is the yellow house on the corner, on the approved site plan already shows curb replacement and paving at that location. So okay, given I that, five minutes are up. Thank you. I know for part of that, um, I know you refer to Gary Werner. I believe he's the builder, though I don't know that he's the owner of that property. And my understanding, the site plans for that were approved, I think, in 2003. So that, that actually does go back some time. So I don't know what authority the planning board would have to go back and overturn or change something that was done and already approved. It's usually part of it as it goes forward. I know we are looking into um, what we can do for flooding in that area, but this is also an initiative of the whole island. And I actually don't know the impact, I'm not an engineer. I don't know what the impact would be of raising just that street. I don't know that you can just raise one street because does it then take the flooding that's in one area and push it into another? But flood resiliency is something we're working on. I do know we have um, something that we're looking at into for that area. Um, and also, I know you didn't get a chance to bring it up, but I know your third issue, I'm gonna guess, was also about um, access to the waterway. Um, for the old Rod Real site, I did speak with the uh, owner um, of the property there and conveyed um, that you were requesting to have some type of access. And he said that's something that he would try to look into and work on um, to make sure that you guys had access. But I think the street you referred to was, might have been 14th Street. I don't know that there's any beach ac or water access at this point right now, because I believe it's that, that street might be completely overgrown. But I did convey that to the owner. I said that that was something that was important to his neighbors. And he said that that was something that he would look into and try to, to try to create and try to work with everybody. Um, the other issue was the uh, ADA curbing. Um, again, I don't know if we have the authority to go back and change something that was approved a long time ago, but that is something, an initiative that the city is working on. And we are working through the city to upgrade our ADA compliance. So that's kind of a long-term thing. Uh, the same thing with the streets. You know part of what we're doing in our long-term plan for the city is, you know, what are the improvements that need to be done to the streets where it comes to one, the water and sewer underneath, two, the, the height of the streets and things like that. That's something we're looking at long-term to the final paving. So for that, that I don't know if that's a, a quick fix because that's something we are looking island-wide on what needs to be done. You know, but I will tell you that whatever steps we can take, we will take them and we will take them in a reasonable amount of time. But this is, you know, it's, it's more than just one street. It's, it's the entire island we're looking at when it comes to those changes. Okay, Mr. Kitts, you're up next. Please give your name and address for, to the city clerk. Uh, Peter Kitts, my address is 202 15th Street North. Um, my home is currently under construction by Gary Warner, and I'm a direct neighbor to Brooks Garrison. I just wanted to add two points to what Brooks has already said. With regards to the lighting on 15th Street, uh, which he mentioned uh, for years, the one uh, light that uh, was vacant on, on that one area uh, presents an issue to my construction because it comes, they, they place the pole in position where my driveway is being built as part of the construction. So at some point it would have to be moved. And um, the neighborhood is, as Brooks said, the neighborhood is going forward to request that the light not just be moved, but removed permanently be, with the, uh, the information that was presented by Brooks. The second point I'd like to make in addition to what, uh, just to elaborate on what Brooks said on 14th Street, and I'm sure the council is very aware of this. You know, there are times where that road is just not passable, that we would have difficulty getting to our homes, those, those homes on 15th Street because of the flooding. So I would just ask the council to consider that fact uh, with all of the information that was presented in, in Brooks' correspondence to the council, because right now it, it presents a real problem to the residents 
uh, on 15th Street. Perfect, thank you. And, you know, that's one of the big things we are working on is our flood resiliency. And, you know, we definitely work to try to resolve that. One of the issues we run into too, and I don't know if people understand the engineering of this, but, you know, our outfall pipes and our water runoff, you know, runs basically on a gravity-based system. We're not that much higher than sea level. So the, the pipes itself don't have a great pitch. So what ends up happening is when we get a, a ton of rain on a, uh, on a high tide, especially on a full moon high tide, the water just has nowhere to go. You know, and it's not until that, that water, the, the, the bay itself out there goes down that the water can actually run out. One of the things we've been trying to do is work on that with the pump stations that we've had around the island. Um, it's something we're working to improve. So we will look to see what we can do to enhance that area. But that's one of the greatest challenges. You know, we live on a barrier island and it's tough when, when it gets a heavy rain on a, a high tide, there's just nowhere for the water to go. Does anybody else uh, wants to get involved in, in the public comment section? Uh, Mr. Kitts, do you have something else to add? Uh, nothing further to add other than uh, all of the other uh, points that Brooks made in his correspondence to the council uh, most recently. Hey, thank you. If there's anybody else, uh, please signal to me or uh, if you're on your phone, uh, unmute yourself and give your name uh, and address to the city clerk. Mayor, I see nobody else trying to get our attention. All right, this time we're gonna close public comment. Uh, council comments, I actually have a couple. Uh, one, Councilman Leteri, if you, I don't, I know you were CC'd on the email. If you could reach out to uh, Mr. Garrison and just uh, work with him to make sure we get the letter from the neighbors and stuff so we can begin that process if people want street lights removed. I think that's just all we would need is the majority of the neighbors to sign a letter saying they wanted it removed. And then we can kind of move forward, at least on that issue. That's one of the things we can work on. Pretty yeah, we're already on it. Uh, I had a conversation with uh, uh, Jim Bennett and uh, John Doring actually this morning about it. And uh, we talked about, you know, what the wants and needs were, as well as the paving of the street and, and raising of curbing and stuff like that because of the need to repave at some point by the developer. And it, it seemed like it was um, didn't make sense to, to have them do any repaving until the whole concept of how that street was going to be renovated to alleviate the water problem. Um, I guess, as you remember, I mean, for years, we had the same problem at 12th and Beach. That was a flood area. Every time they had the slightest range, you'd have, you know, six, eight inches of water accumulating on that corner. But since we put the pumps in further down the street and a lot of that storm water now is, is quickly removed so that we don't have that flooding. So I'm sure that there's something that we can do in that intersection to uh, afford them access to their homes during the worst of storms. So we are working on that, Mr. Garrison and Mr. Kitts. Um, and like I did say, I did talk to John Doring today about it and, and uh, I spoke to the city manager also and uh, we're working on it. As far as the pole, we're gonna notify Atlantic City Electric and it's basically up to them to remove their pole. Um, we can't tell them what to do. We can request it be removed, but we're working on that. I was by there today and took a picture of the numbers off the pole. I also walked down by the Gabions at the end of 14th Street that I know were a concern for you. Uh, discovered a dead seal while I was there. Uh, and the... Uh, Marine Mammal Stranding Center responded very quickly. But anyway, that's that's where we are with that. And, and we are working on it, Mayor. Perfect, thank you. And just, you know, just keep us uh, a council updated as we move forward. Um, and, you know, the hope too is with the Gabion system that was put in, that would help to keep some of the, the tidal flooding out as well. So there is some work being done in that area. Uh, but again, you know, I think we need an overall plan of what needs to be done in that area. So like you said, it doesn't make sense to pave it if we have to dig things up and do something different. So I think we need to have and that, that. I believe that that was one of Mr. Uh, Garrison's concerns 
to have them, you know, and, and the other concern was that he didn't want the fact that they weren't going to pave to hold up COs for the, for the two new homes that were being built. And I assured him that, you know, there's things that can be worked out with that. That's the reason for having bonds and everything else that they certainly wouldn't hold up ownership over, you know, something that's out of their control, really. So I guess we're good. Okay, perfect. We're all and actually, if I could uh, turn it over to Karen, I think she had something for us. Um, this time last year, we um, went with, we rescinded our bag ban, our plastic bag ban <clears throat> temporarily because of COVID. Um, it was suspected that people bringing their own bags in, in and out of the store could be cause, it could be spreading COVID. So I think now we have enough people who are vaccinated and smarter about their shopping. And I think it's time to go back to our plastic bag ban and requiring people to take in their reusable bags. So if do we need to do a resolution or we do we need to yeah, we do a voice resolution. voice resolution to go back to our bag ban or temporary yes. temporarily suspend <laughs> however it is <laughs> i wrote it down but i don't have it in front of me okay i got it for you uh so uh karen's making a motion to repeal the temporary suspension of the city's bag ban and you said you would want this to take effect uh may 28th which is the yeah. Friday before memorial day weekend right before memorial day weekend all right so we have a motion on the table is there a second second all right. Any questions or comments from council? All right, seeing none, can we have roll call? You? Yes. Terry? Yes. Haney? Yes. DeLucre? Yes. Hain? You're muted. <laughs> yes. Reardon? Yes. Maricera? Yes. Motion carry. All right, and then Jim, if you, I think when we put the temporary suspension in place, you sent a, a letter out to all the businesses, if you could kind of just follow the same process, but send the letter out telling them that we have now uh, reinstated it, effective May 28th. Yes, sir, I'll do that in the morning uh, and I'll speak to Fred to make sure that uh, I'm on good solid ground with it. Thank right. you. Thank you. And I, I know um, there was a few members of the green team uh, when this came out who reached out to me and say, look, I understand this is a temporary precaution, but you make sure you keep it temporary. Uh, they didn't want to see us use this as some kind of excuse to kind of go back on our word. So I'm glad that we're in a better position and that, um, you know, we, we know a lot more about the virus now than we did a year ago, but in the instance then, <clears throat> when to make sure we kept people safe. Now that we're in a better position, it's good to kind of move forward and, and again, kind of return back to what we need to do as a city. All right, are there any final council comments? Uh, Mayor, I'd just like to say that today, everybody is Irish, should they uh, so choose. So uh, if that's the route you took, uh, have a, I hope you had a great day, have a good evening. Corned beef and cabbage, whatever beverage you might like. And uh, Mike, you do have a, uh, I think Mike said he's got a party somewhere. He's, he's just taking care of the tab. I, that's just a rumor going around. So we're, maybe we're coming to your house. Dad. We're coming to your house. Oh, I knew that was coming. I knew it was coming. <laughs> <laughs> uh, take care, everybody. <laughs> Sounds great. Thank you. If there's no further comments, we have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The eyes have it. So I'd like to thank everybody for uh, coming out and watching your council team at work. Uh, have a great St. Patrick's Day and be safe. Bye, everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah.